Good evening, church. You know, we all are together. We are the church. We worship in our various congregations, but together we are the church. And it's good occasionally to come together as the church and worship together. And so I want to welcome you all tonight to our Bailey County Ministerial Alliance Community Thanksgiving worship service. You may have remembered last year we did not get to have this gathering because of the snow. And so it's been two years since we've gathered together as a community to worship and praise God and give him thanks for his many blessings. And so it's wonderful to have you with us tonight to do that. Uh, as you may have noticed that after the service, we would like to invite you to come back to the fellowship hall, which is down the hallway that way for refreshments. And so we hope that you'll have time to, to gather in the fellowship hall after our worship service and spend some time worshiping or visiting together and, and celebrating this season of Thanksgiving. From Psalm 105, we hear these words that might uh, prepare us to come into God's presence for worship. I'll give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather here this evening, we are reminded of the many things that we give thanks to you for, for everything. Everything comes from you and everything that we are thankful for, we are thankful to you. And so each in our hearts, we give thanks to you for many gifts. And we'll pause for a moment and, and thank you in the silence. And together we give you thanks for many gifts, including freedom to join together in worship as we so choose, for the blessing of a community that, that honors you and takes time to gather, and for friends to worship together with, for music that we can use to rejoice and worship your holy name. We thank you for your word as we study tonight. We pray for... David, as he prepares to bring that message to us, help us to receive it with joy and respond as you guide us. We thank you for these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn this, mor uh, this morning, you can tell we're in habit. <laughs> this evening is 694 in the hymnal or watch the monitors overhead. Come, you thankful people, come. Stand and join us as we sing together. Yeah. 
This is a reading from the book of 2 Corinthians. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Let each one do just as he has purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that always have an all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. As it is written, he scattered abroad, he gave to the poor. His righteousness abides forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. Because of the proof given by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience to your confession of the gospel of Christ and for the liberality of your contribution to them all. While they also, by prayer on your behalf, yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as the guitars come up and get ready, would you stand and join us as we enter his gates with thanksgiving? We were, uh, I was uh, preached at this morning <clears throat> about high expectations and uh, uh, Sergio read the scripture just now uh, about uh, uh, reaping what you sow, uh, I guess that if you don't have high expectations, you're not going to get much out of this this evening. And uh, uh, I hope that as uh, Reverend David comes tonight that y'all will have high expectations. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. This next group of songs is, uh, as we were gathering together, uh, mixed congregations from across the community, uh, we thought that uh, one of the things that brings us all back together is some of the old gospel songs, and so this is a medley of 
three songs that I think you will all know, and uh, you might even tap your toe to. Born at the cross where my Savior died, born with a cleansing for sin, I cried. There to my heart was the blood of pride. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of pride. Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus, safe and secure from all our loves. Leaning, Jesus, leaning, Jesus, leaning. On the everlasting arms, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord to near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, Jesus, safe and secure from all our loves. Leaning, on the everlasting arms I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. If you'd like to go ahead and be seated, feel free to. We're going to end our entire time of worship. And uh, we're going to sing, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. But I, I just think that uh, we sang some fun songs there. I, saw, I did see some people tapping their toes. And that was good. Uh, it is a joy to be here. But we're here for a reason. We're here to know God, to see God, to see God in each other, and to get closer to God. So prepare your hearts as we sing, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before. Sing that again. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is 
a time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before Confess you are God, when every knee will bow. Still, the greatest treasure remains for those who will gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to see me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to start up here, but I may not stay up here. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be here this evening, and thanks to Pastor Mindy and the church here for in welcoming, welcoming us. And uh, this is our first Thanksgiving service. We've We've been here less than a year, but we're closing in on a year, and they say a pastor's honeymoon lasts about the first year. So I've got about uh, about 10 months. I think I just need to party the next couple of months and, and uh, ride this thing out. No, we are, we are just thrilled to be in Mule Shoe and uh, just meeting different friends and uh, attending one of the meetings of uh, the ministerial alliance and and then not attending the last one and see what happens <laughs> I didn't attend the last one so I sent a text message to Brother Tracy and said sorry I can't make it and he texted me back and said so does that mean you'll speak at the Thanksgiving service <laughs> so I mean what do you say <laughs> you know but I, I very seldom do I turn down an opportunity to, to speak and talk about the Lord. Uh, you know, folks, we serve an awesome God. Thank you. That was an amen spot. We serve an awesome God that does exceedingly abundantly above. And He can do for us what no one else can do. Hallelujah. And I just think it's awesome to be able to go to, the ch go to church and fellowship and worship and serve an awesome God. And, you know, I just get so excited sometimes all I can step, I just step back and say, wow. In fact, it's, it's so awesome that I say it backwards, wow. <laughs> That's the God we serve. Amen. And uh, why, why don't you turn to someone and say, you know, you really need to loosen up. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. You have any idea what it is to get up here and try to preach and everybody's kind of looking at you like, you know, no, it's not that, but I'm just playing with you. I, I think I really better get into this and get going because Amen. that was a good spot right there. Where's the ushers? Could y'all show him the, the door? Uh, huh. Wow. 
which one of my members paid him to do that? <laughs> anyway, uh, Pastor Mindy handed me this gadget here when I walked in, and I was sitting back there, and I was studying it and trying to figure out the right way to turn it on and turn it off, and I noticed something. It has a timer set for 20 minutes. <laughs> and I pushed the wrong button, folks, and now it's, it's two hours. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Hang in there with me. And uh, I want to just kind of share a little bit with you before I really get started. I'm going to make you laugh a little bit, I hope. That's that part of loosening up because I think it's, it ought to be fun when we go to church. We have our solemn occasions. You know, we have our times when we mourn. We have our times when we are silent. But I believe when we go to church, for the most part, folks, we, it's a celebration. Hallelujah. We've got so much to be grateful for. If you are saved, if He has touched your life and redeemed you, and saved you from, from the sinful life in this world, you have something to celebrate. And it ought to be fun when we go to church. Is it any wonder sometimes when we can't seem to get people to come to church anymore? That's another one of those amen spots. Come on. It ought to be fun and we can enjoy it. Well, let me just share two or three things with you and... Um, it's according to where your level is of laughing, how far I go with this. But uh, I like this because during the, and the other pastors here know what I'm talking about. We get calls all through the year, people needing help. And, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of like the person that worked in the office and he, call, he called so many times. He kept calling in that he was sick. And one day he felt like he had used that, that excuse so many times that he called one day and told him he was dead so he couldn't come in. But, you know, and it's kind of like that, isn't it, Pastor Tracy? We get called all the time, people wanting help and this and that and one, and then you got to discern and, you know, what, can you, what do you give to and what don't you give to? And, and so it's nice to get one of these calls every once in a while. Says the church secretary, Miss Daisy, announced the ringing. She answered the ringing phone, and a man's voice asked, "Can I speak to the head hog at the trough?" The secretary thought she heard what he said, but said, "I'm sorry, who?" And the caller repeated, "Can I speak to the head hog at the trough?" Daisy thought a moment and then answered, "Well, if you mean the preacher, you may refer to him as the pastor or brother." But I'd prefer that you never refer to him as a head hog at the trough. And it was to this that the man replied, Well, I was wanting to give $5,000 to the building fund. And quick as a wink, Daisy responded, Hang on, sir, I believe I just hurt his oink. <laughs> oh, goodness. I like the, the bulletin goofs. Do you all do the bulletins here and in, in the church here? And you've, you know, I like sometimes they don't quite turn out like, like they should. And uh, said, uh, here's some of them. It says, Thursday night potluck supper, prayer and medi medication to follow. <laughs> wow. For those of you who have children and don't know it, we have a nursery downstairs. <laughs> it's usually the other way around, isn't it? We know. <laughs> this being Easter Sunday, Mrs. Bertha Lewis will come forward and lay an egg on the altar. Y'all didn't get that one. <laughs> Next Sunday, a special collection will be taken to defray the cost of the new carpeting. All those wishing to do something on the new carpet will come forward and do it. I told you to loosen up. During the absence of our pastor, we enjoy the rare privilege of hearing a good sermon when Dr. A.B. Doe supplied our pulpit. <laughs> 
You will want to attend the National Prayer and Fasting Conference at First Church. Your registration will include three meals. <laughs> Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a chance to get rid of all those things you don't want to keep. Don't forget your husbands. <laughs> Please welcome Pastor Cowden. He's a caring man who loves hurt, hurting people. <laughs> I better stop. <laughs> Some of you are already thinking about chocolate cake. Hallelujah. I've said all that to bring me to what I want to speak into your heart tonight. I'm not calling this preaching. I'm not calling it a sermon. I want to call it a message. A word. I've got a word for you because I know that life is real. And when we have times like this that, that come along and Thanksgiving brings to us that sense of being thankful, being grateful, thinking the Lord for the for bountiful blessings and I believe all across America there will be people doing that this this next week but I also know that life is very real and that there could be people here tonight that you're having a hard time it's kind of difficult to be thankful because of some of the things you've gone through this year Maybe some of the things you're going through right now. Maybe you've lost a loved one recently. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe there's a, a family conflict. Maybe there's sickness, tragedy that has come your way. Maybe it's just 2014 has just been one of those years where it's been one thing after another. I have found in all the years of pastoring that there's been times I had two teenage boys and they had their little times and they went through things and one of them wandered out of our care and out of the church and we never gave up praying. We went through some things. We, we battled as far as whatever you want to call it, arguing and trying to get some sense into his head, you know, been there. There were car wrecks, you know, things like that that we went through during all of that time. But you know what? Something that I realized all through these years that if I look around long enough, I can find somebody else that's got a whole lot, that's a whole lot worse off than I am. In fact, my stuff that perhaps I'm going through is very, very, very small compared to some folks and what they're battling and what they're going through. I said a few minutes ago that we have a lot of calls and a lot of people that stop by wanting help to pay a light bill or food or whatever the case may be, but I'm going to tell you something else we have a lot of. We have a lot of people that are genuine when they show up on our doorstep looking for help, seeking help. And last resort, they need help. How many of you know that we serve an awesome God? Hallelujah! That is able to do that help and able to do that thing. We, the church have the answer. We should. And that's Jesus Christ. Let's consider the Apostle Paul. When we talk about troubles and we talk about, you know, it's just, Pastor, it's just hard for me to be able to give thanks. It's hard. You talk about loosen up or get a smile on my face. You don't understand. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I'm going through. I want to just make you think for a couple of minutes here. Not to take away anything about what you're facing or what you're going through. And listen to me. What you may go through. 
in the coming weeks. Consider the Apostle Paul. He was stoned and left for dead. He was beaten with rods three times. He was whipped with 39 lashes five times. He's attacked by an angry mob. He suffered many death threats. He was shipwrecked three times, floated for 24 hours. He was criticized by other Christians. He was placed under arrest for two years without a trial. He was bitten by a viper. You can read about a lot of this in 2 Timothy chapter 3. But in 2 Corinthians 12, in the 12th chapter, it tells us that on top of all of this, Paul tells us that he, that tells us that he was given me a thorn in the flesh. He gave me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, came against him, but yet in spite of all of these things, he said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. I think one of the greatest things that we can see from anybody. I have visited people. I have gone to the hospital to visit people on their deathbed. And when I'm riding the elevator up, and I'm getting out of that elevator and walking down that hallway, I am thinking and praying within myself, Lord, help me. Help me say something that will cheer this person up. Help me say something that will be an encouragement. Give me the right words. I want to I be able to pray over them and leave them better off than I go. And I walk into that room and what happens? They turn that thing around and they're the ones cheering me up. I just kind of open the conversation, smile, come. Here they are. They're the ones laying in the hospital bed. And they've been given the awful report of you don't have long to live. There's no hope. We've done all we can do. All we can do is keep you comfortable. And they're laying there looking up at me with a smile on their face and the joy of the Lord radiating, you know, just radiant in their face. Obvious. And they're the ones that's encouraging me and lifting me up. In the midst of it, it is wonderful to be able to see somebody that can do that. But even greater than that, I can stand before you tonight and give God glory and honor and praise because I've been there and done that. I've experienced it myself, been been through it, been through the, the trial, the storm. Isn't it amazing that Jesus gave his disciples directions to cross the water knowing all along there was going to be a storm. Anybody else in this room ever felt like the Lord led you into something and spoke something into your life and you took that step of faith and you stepped out of the boat and you know you went for it and it just seems like The bottom falls out. Everything goes wrong. And you begin to question, you begin to wonder, man, what is going on here? You know, it seems like if God's leading us and directing us, we ought to have the favor of God. We ought to be going at this. And and what's happening? It just, everything has, has turned around. How many of you know God knows there's a storm you're in right now? God knows there's a storm tomorrow. I thought about when Pastor Mindy said that we didn't, you didn't get to have the Thanksgiving service last year because it snowed. Aren't you glad Thanksgiving service wasn't last Sunday? Wow. That's living in northwest Texas, isn't it? Storms can pop up and storms can come. And it's the storms of life that calls us to weary frustrated fear rises up we begin to question but I'm telling you it's through it all that God can bring us through something like that in some of the greatest experiences that you can have with the Lord Jesus Christ is when you stay true come on 
I said, when you stay true, when you hang in there and you keep pressing on and keep pushing on, hallelujah, if he tells you to get out of the, the boat, then walk on water. And if you're not walking on water, then swim. Hallelujah. You know, if you can't swim, float. If you can't do any of the above, then say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming home. Hallelujah. You know, but stay true. Hang in there. Because He will bring you through the storm. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stand up here and profess to be some holy person that's, that knows it all and has got it all down because there's been those times when I've wanted to give up, you know, and just throw in the towel. My wife went through, I don't know, six, seven, eight years all total of sickness there was a time she lay in a hospital bed as frail as she had no energy. She was completely just skin and bones. And I called her family. We were in Richmond, Virginia, and her family was in central Texas. And I called them and I said, if you want to see your daughter again, you better come. Because I don't know how much longer she's going to be here. In those last few weeks, we went through things. She was a, she's a strong prayer warrior. And she, I mean, God gave her. He knew what he was doing when he gave her to me. <laughs> I mean, she keeps me straight, you know. And she is a prayer warrior and she hangs in there too. But there came a time in the weariness of her body that mentally and physically she was weary. And she'd look at me and she said, I am so tired. David, please pray. Please pray for me. I'm hurting. I'm sick. And there was times when I'd pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and I'd just feel like, you know, it didn't seem like I was getting anywhere. I felt like throwing in the towel. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Some of you have been there and you've been through some of the same things. But through it all, oh, hallelujah, our awesome God, our faithful God saw us through that. And we had a, guess what we had? We had a Thanksgiving service. And she was so weak that she um, couldn't hardly stand. And I was prepared. It was a community Thanksgiving service where we were pastoring at the time. And so I'm getting ready. I've got to go. I've got to be one of the pastors that's there. I've got part of the service, and we've got a guest speaker. And I go in there, and she's getting dressed the best she can. And she says, I'm going. i got to go. i got to go to this. And, I mean, she is skin and bones, frail, weak. She's been eating a slice of bread, one slice of bread, for weeks now. That's all she's been living off of. In the faithfulness of God. She got dressed, went to that Thanksgiving service, and folks, they, where we were at, it doesn't snow in inches, it snows in feet. Partly cloudy is probably a two-foot snow up there, is what they call it. There was a blizzard. I mean, it was coming down. You couldn't always see. And yet the church was full of people. We had a tremendous service. The speaker spoke. He prayed for people, invited them to come down. He prayed with them. And my wife was up there, and he walked all around her and never laid a hand over, never prayed, never, t never even said anything to her, didn't do a thing. And I'm kind of standing back watching all this, and I'm kind of getting a little bit aggravated, you know, because she's put all this effort forth, and the preacher's not even praying for her. Make a long story short, at the end of the service, the amen has been said, and so I, uh, I walked up to my wife, and I said, well, honey, I'm, gonna go, I'm just going to go give some money to the guest speaker, because it was my job to take him and get him something to eat. Uh, we had a Denny's restaurant the only restaurant <laughs> in town and that was my job to take him and so I told her I said I'm going to go take him and give him some money and she said hold on she said I want to go I'm hungry and I said what she said I'm hungry I hadn't heard her say that in over a year 
We went to Denny's last night. Had That night had great fellowship. She ate a, I don't know, it was a big sandwich and some french fries. She ate all of that. Downed it all. I tell everybody, and boy, she's been downing it ever since, you know. Uh, she ate it all. I couldn't believe it. Didn't make her sick, everything, you know. You know what? Don't, don't question the faithfulness of God. He knows what He's doing. He knows the storm is there. He knows if you've been through a storm, He knows if you're going through a storm right now. He knows if there's a storm next week. And it doesn't matter what it is or how big it may be. Our God is faithful. He loves you. He cares about you. Scripture says He knows the number of hairs on your head. I mean, He's got a little bit more difficult problem with some of you than others. But, you know, He knows. He knows that, folks. And I want to say to you tonight about this faithfulness of God. I believe there's a reason. Not that anybody else couldn't have brought a great message tonight, but I know He's got me here to speak into your life and to say to you, stay faithful and stay thankful. Stay faithful and stay thankful. Keep the faith. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep wowing. Hallelujah. Keep serving Him. Keep loving Him. Let Him be the Lord of your life. And then be thankful. Be thankful. If Paul gave thanks in the midst of overwhelming circumstances, then I believe you and I can. I said I believe we can. I want to end by reading these scriptures in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. It says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord, say amen for grace. Thank you, Lord, for that grace. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Oh, hallelujah. If I can leave you with, with a final word, I want to exhort you during this season of Thanksgiving, during the Christmas season, and in the new year that's ahead of us. I want to challenge you, I want to exhort you, and I want to say to you, be sober, be vigilant. Come on. Live for God out of a sense of urgency. Live for God. I said this last Sunday in a message. We need to start living out of desperation because, listen, folks, without God, America is doomed. Come on. Without God being supreme in our churches, our churches are doomed. It's a sad fact when we can read a statistic that I recently read that said that we opened up over 4,000 churches last year across America. But we closed over 7,000. Without God being supreme and first. Hallelujah. Without the church rising up. Did He not come to... to the Bible, the Scripture says He came that we might have what? Life. And have it what? more abundantly. Hallelujah. It's life. Joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. 
It's experiencing Jesus. He's got to become supreme in our life. We can rise up and be His church and we can see a revival that will bring people in. There'll be growth. Come on. I'm tired of seeing empty seats. I want to see the house of God filled with people that need Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to be able to come together as a body, as a family, as a group of people, believers, because we are one church. I said we are one church. And there's no time to be jealous of each other. How many of us would, would admit, because we got plenty of empty seats, and there's lots of people that aren't in a church come Sunday morning. That's why he needs to be Lord and supreme in his church. Let's live life to the fullest in Jesus Christ. Stay faithful and stay thankful. And I'm telling you, I believe, we've said this many a time, but I believe with all my heart, 2015 can be the greatest year for the church yet. And I want to see it. Oh, I just hope, though. I just trust and believe the Lord bless your socks off this next year and get a hold of your heart that you go out and the favor of God be upon you and you begin to witness and to tell people about Jesus and become contagious with Jesus' love. Hallelujah. Attracting them. Get out of your car to come into the church and there's people coming from every direction. Who are they? I don't know. Oh, come on. Come on. I'm going to have to ask you to loosen up again. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Come on. How many of you are with me? Let's do this thing and let's be His church and who's He's called us to be. Put your hands together and give Him a hand clap of praise. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Of His church. Father, I thank You for just giving me the opportunity to speak a few minutes. Just to love people and to love You. Lord, I can speak out of experience in knowing that you're, that great is thy faithfulness. You will see us through the storm. So we need not worry. We need not fear. But remain faithful and remain thankful. For you are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. And, and he has freed us to be thankful, to be free, and to go out and influence others. So stand and join us as we sing Amazing Grace. Yes. 
This evening, I come uh, give a quick report on the Baptist, excuse me, the Bailey County. <laughs> Hold on. I promise I'm not giving a plug for the Baptist Church. I promise I'm not. Oh, goodness. I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, the Bailey County Ministerial Alliance. Mm hmm. Welcome to Mule <laughs> Um, as we talked about this evening, it, it's a the, Bat, the Bailey County <laughs> Ministerial Alliance is, is a, a group um, of, of churches here in Muleshoe in Bailey County that come together, um, and, and we have several different funds that allow us to help people, um, that allow us to do things for folks who need help. And one of those things is, is called the Hope Chest, and the Hope Chest is, is a fund that, that does those different things. It helps us. Um, give assistance to help people um, pay their their medical uh, prescriptions and, and utility bills and, and things such as this. And so tonight we're we're taking um, an offering and to help fund that to help uh, assist other people. So we hope um, you'll consider doing that this evening. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this this evening. God, we thank you so much for just who you are. God, for a chance to gather as indeed the one church of Bailey County and, and surrounding Milshu area. God, I thank you so much for the, the gifts and abilities that you've given each and every ministry that is in Bailey County and, and Milshu. God, and, and what a gift it is to be able to, to gather here as the one church tonight. God, and as you've gifted us, I pray that you would allow us to gift others to do your work in allowing 
us the privilege of helping and assisting where assistance is needed. God, we pray your blessings over that tonight. In this thankful season, we are so thankful for what we have and for what we can give. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. cup is full, my heart is overflowing. I've been blessed in ways my mind can't comprehend. And when I think your hand of love has given me enough, you reach down and touch me once again. With so much more than I could ever ask you for More than I dreamed you had in store for me It's hard to see, oh Lord, how you could possibly give more More than my heart's desires Much more than love requires of you for all you do I worship and adore you even more If all that you had given me was mercy A chance to live when I deserve to die Lord, that would have been enough But out of your great love You poured out your grace in limitless supply And gave me more than I could ever ask you for More than I dreamed you had in store for me It's hard to see, oh Lord, how you could possibly give more more than my heart's desires much more than love requires of you for all you do i worship and adore you even more as long as there is breath in me and life left to live I will forever be amazed at how you give and give and give so much more than I could ever ask you for more than I dreamed you had in store for me it's hard to see oh Lord how you could possibly give more more than my heart's desires much more than love requires of you for all you do i worship and adore you even more i worship and adore you
Thank you, Lord. to be together and uh, to be together as a church and for your generosity and giving to the Hope Chest to help out folk in our communities like Quentin said it really does go to help a lot of folks in our community people that are genuinely in need and uh, I thank you for your generosity and support in the Beta County Ministerial Alliance uh, Pastor many of the people of the Methodist Church here want to thank you for hosting us again and to remember the the uh, afterwards uh, the uh, refreshments uh, just music thank you guys so much for leading us in worship Pastor David uh, for that powerful word. Thank you so much. It spoke to us. And uh, God bless you. And uh, as we go from this place, I pray that you guys have a great Thanksgiving this week in your travels. If you have family coming in, if you're going out, pray that there be an abundance of, of a blessing on your tables, laughter, joy, uh, safe travels. And again, uh, it, it's, it has been great to be together. Receive this blessing as you go from this place. And uh, again, it's uh, been a great night and a great time to be together. Thank you, Curtis, so much for that song. Appreciate you. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless and keep you all. Thank you all so much. Shalom, Christ be your shalom.